Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about the Fiscus X27. That's this one here. We just got that yesterday, so we tried it out and it works quite well. So we'll go over that in a minute, but as you can see on the table, there's quite a large assortment of splitting axes. There's only one axe that I've got there. I do have a couple more axes in the garage, but uh, we're mainly talking about the uh, splitting mauls or splitting axes. So we've got both types here. Fiscus only sell one splitting maul, and we'll just zoom in there, you'll be able to see that. That's this particular one here. This is a 3.6 kilogram ISOCore Pro. Beautiful. Uh, like 70 millimeters wide uh, sledgehammer for driving in wedges so that's the difference between a maul a maul has a sledgehammer this is an El Cheapo one here and this is a beautiful S-wing that weighs 2.7 kilos so you've got 2.7 kilos here and you've got 3.6 kilograms here so this is an 8 pounder and this is a 6 pounder Sometimes you'll see uh, 10 pounder ones, but what you've got to remember is that if you've got to start swinging these big boys uh, for a couple of hours, you're going to get tired. This one here is not too bad, it's 2.7 kilos. And this one here, the small one, this one here is only 2 kilograms. Now, in the Fiscus range, a splitting axe, we go from a little tiny axe. So, this is a little tiny axe from Fiscus. Fiscus aren't big on making axes, they only make little tomahawk type axes. And as you can see, it's just a bit of a wedge shape, but it doesn't have that real large uh, wedge shape like the splitting axes. So this one's not too bad, it's okay for camping. It's more of a uh, boy's axe, little uh, axe than anything else, but nonetheless can be very dangerous. So then if we go up to the Fiscus, I've got the X17. It's got a total weight of... Uh, about 1.5 1, uh, kilograms so more than likely this weighs about 1.4 uh, or 1.3 something then we jump to this other one I'm not even too sure what this one is but this one here is uh, 1.6 kilograms so it's only 100 grams heavy than the X17 so it's almost similar it's just got a longer handle this is very old as you can tell by the uh, the black uh, holster whereas all the modern holsters have this clipping mechanism and especially now like you look at the x27 it's got the orange uh, part on it this is the xa22 this is a sappy or what some people refer to as a hooker rune uh, really do like using that uh, hooker rune not so much to pick timber up but to drag timber out of the trailer so when I come home and I empty the trailer, rather than bend over, I can use this and dig it into the timber and drag it out of the trailer. So I really find that useful uh, for doing that. Uh, interesting enough, if we go and have a look at the one at the back, I remember there was a, a guy on YouTube that looked at this and looks like the Tesla sign, actually. <laughs> the T looks like a Tesla sign. Yeah, he looked at this and he goes, oh, wow, you know, look at this thing here. It fans out. It's brilliant. But look, it does work. But the problem is it's only two kilograms. So two kilograms weight, head weight, it's not going to split uh, your really big logs so easily. The only other thing that I threw in there was just a bit of an axe. Uh, this is a cyclone axe. It's not a bad axe. It's a polished axe. Uh as you can see, the difference is very, very thin type wedge. Uh, so just thought I'd throw that in there. And then when you look at the, the Est wing, very, very, look at, look at the width that it's got there. And you've got this beak, parrot beak on the top here. This is to give you a bit of strike protection, over strike protection. Very, very sharp, razor sharp. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that turn around and say, oh, splitting malls don't need to be sharp. Yes, I agree with that. In principle, splitting malls don't need to be sharp, but you will benefit 
from them if they are sharp. And I can be a te testament to that. Have a look at that finger. I was sharpening these up and, uh, yeah, cut myself. Which reminds me, before we get into the X27, I want to show you something. So just bear with me. Okay, what I wanted to show you was the Fiscus sharpener, uh, axe sharpener and knife sharpener. You push it uh, that way for knife and you push it that way for axe, so it just slides backwards and forwards. Then you've got this like little spiral type little wheel in the bottom and you just place your axe in there and you sharpen it. And you only need to give it about three or four strokes and that's how I uh, cut myself quite deeply with the X27. I just ran it through there a couple of times. These, uh, I got this on a deal when I brought, I think, the little small axe that came with a package. Uh, so occasionally Fiscus do that. It would be a great idea if Fiscus, uh, I don't know why they don't make proper axes, uh, two kilo axes, but they don't. They're more into the uh, wood splitters. So, okay, the X27, how good is it? Well, first of all, the X27 comes in two variants. X25 and X27's got exactly the same head. They weigh the same. 2.4 kilos, 2.56 kilos total weight with that comp, uh, fiber comp uh, type handle. So now you're going to ask the question, what do you want, a longer handle or a shorter handle? You've got 36 inches, I think, versus about 32 inches. So there's, there's a difference of about four inches between the two. I actually prefer the longer handle because it gives you more striking power, uh, more velocity, uh, yeah, yeah, speed as, as, uh, as you bring the axe down. The other thing is the, the longer the axe, the further away it is from your feet. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, that's too far away or they just don't like it. But you do actually get used to using it. It's a little bit longer than the uh, Fiscus Maul. So if you were to put it up against... Not much. What would it be? Oh, 50 mil? Wouldn't be much in it at all. So it's just a little bit longer. So maybe that one's 34 inches. Anyway, nonetheless. Uh, okay, the X27. Let's take it out and have a look at it. So you've got this beautiful orange colour. So especially if you lived in places where there was snow or something. If you drop that on the ground, you're going to find it. So it's not a problem. Because when they went back to the, the earlier ones, they were just all black. Okay, so here it is. Let's have a look at it so you can get a good look at it. What is unique to all of the uh, Fiscus axes, the wedge, they all look the same. Now, for those that don't know, roughly this angle that you see here on the face, the cheeks, so that's referred to the cheeks. So if you hold that there, you can see a little gap in between there. So all the Fiscus have that slight little curve there. This angle is approximately 25 degrees and if you look at the edge there it's a little bit difficult to see but on the edge you, know, you can see it there you'll see it's a, it's about six mil quarter of an inch that's 30 degrees that is the cutting edge on all fiscus uh splitting axes except for the uh the iso uh, pro mall that's a different angle altogether and one thing about this sharpening device that we mentioned before, it's designed to sharpen at a 30 degree angle on the axe setting. Not too sure on the knife setting, it could be slightly different, but I think it may be around still 30 because 30 degrees is great. So because it's a fibre comp handle, uh, you've got a 25 year guarantee on this if you register on the site. So all you've got to do is go on their site and register. Uh, one thing about this being 2.56 kilo in total weight, yeah, I'm not saying you're going to be able to swing this all day long, but certainly you're going to be able to swing this much longer than, uh, say, the 3.6 kilogram type one or the eight pounder. So this is around the five pound mark, and then you jump to the six pound, then you've got the eight pound, and I don't have a, a 10 pounder because... I've got a hydraulic splitter, a 20, a 33 ton hydraulic splitter, and but I still play around with splitting malls. So, which one do you buy, or which one do I recommend? Well, first of all, I recommend all the Fiscus. Uh, they are razor sharp. Fiscus make them that way, as I said. 
you can sort of read up on about axes and splitting uh, mauls and splitting axes and they'll tell you that they don't have to be sharp. I always say this, that when you're either going to split timber or cut timber or work with timber in, in some sort of form of cutting or splitting, the sharper the instrument that you've got, the better it works. That's, that's the way, and that's, uh, that must be Fisker's uh, philosophy because everything they've got is sharp. So, and the steel's very high quality steel, although admittedly I have chipped uh, uh, a fiscus, but uh, maybe there was a could have it. Now, this is the other thing when I say about chipping it. A lot of times you'll see people do demonstrations and they'll be using, they'll be splitting wood and they'll have the wood on the ground. Now, I don't split timber with the wood on the ground, I split it on a block. So, if we go over there, you can see my splitting blocks. There they are, there. Different heights. So the one in the middle, that's normally what I use for the chainsaw. I put the chainsaw on top of that. Uh, I'll put the logs on there and I put the chainsaw on top and cut through them. The little one on the, the left, so the one that's on uh, the left-hand side, uh, normally I use that for splitting. Uh, so, yeah. So back to our, our uh, splitting axes. Which one do you want to use? Well, as I said, the Fiscus X27 has got a longer handle. You do get used to it. You will find out. Now, Now, when I was talking about before how some people put it on the ground, their logs on the ground, like a good example would be this. There's a really good example. So if we look at those logs, let's just say that that log there, the, the one on the right-hand side, that you want to split that, and it's sitting on the ground. And... Just say it takes two strikes, and on your second strike, the the splitter or the maul goes through and hits the ground. Well, I grow rocks on this ground. The, the rocks rocks always find their way to the surface uh, through uh, during the day. It gets hot, so the rock expands, and when the rock expands, then it cools down. And when it cools down and it shrinks again, sometimes the, the the little particles of soil fall in the little crevice that it expanded and then this expansion and shrinkage slowly moves the rock to the surface so i constantly get rocks coming to the surface and if you're going to split wood in that in situation you're going to get chips in your axe you're going to hit a, a rock and you're going to damage your axe so look at worst case scenario that if you do like splitting on the ground, you can always cut yourself a chopping block that's only six inches high, something like that there, so that when your splitting axe goes through or your splitting maul goes through, that it's not going to touch the dirt because dirt's going to blunten it quick as well, but rocks will certainly damage it. So to avoid that, even if you make yourself a small chopping block uh, to avoid the damage. So the fiscus... Uh, X27, as I said, it's got a longer handle. Uh, it depends on the height. I'm about 5'10". So 5'10 for me, I like the Fiscus X27. If you're maybe 5'2 or something, you want to maybe go to the X25, which is just a shorter handle by a couple of inches. But certainly, to me, just because it's longer doesn't mean it's more awkward. You do get used to using what you've got. So you will definitely get used to using the X27 with a longer handle. The longer handle gives you, as I said, more velocity as you bring it down and strike. So that's up to you. But everybody's different. And uh, I highly recommend Fiscus. I Look, even though you see the Fiscus products that I've got, I've got many other Fiscus products like garden shears and uh, other garden tools in the Fiscus range. Uh, they even make rakes. So uh, I do have a lot of stuff at Fiscus. Why do I buy Fiscus? Originally, I got one as a present. My first one was this one, this splitting axe. As I said, about 15, 16 years ago, that was a present that I got. And I was really impressed with it. And since then, the collection has slowly grown. So if you look at this here, this is the, this is the last thing that I purchased, which was yesterday. And I purchased that about seven or eight months ago, and the rest are quite a few years old. Uh, 
this is a fairly recent addition as well that's not that old less than a month as well so that's probably going to be about it i've got enough splitting axes and enough to last me a lifetime i do have a very old one out in the garage uh it's very old and it's interesting when you look at block splitters block splitters are totally different fiscus only make one block splitter which is as i say the iso the fiscus pro iso core which is that one there because all these type ones aren't meant to be used as a sledgehammer on the back uh, they're not meant for that they're meant to be only used as a uh, splitting wedge only so that's about it on the fiscus x27 being a total weight of 2.56 kilos you could use it uh, for hours on end and you won't tire out a lot but certainly using the larger one and even the est wing uh, you'll get a little bit tired using that because they're uh, a lot heavier so the thing is use the big ones on big logs use uh, this type to me this this is good for say medium type the x27 to me is from medium to probably up to not much bigger than about a foot once you're getting bigger than about a foot you really need to go to the big mall and even the big mall i've seen people use that on fairly big logs and i've seen it bounce off on extremely hard timber because i think we would spoken once before about this big large gum tree this eucalypt that we've got in the background that when you start cutting the timber from about this height down to the bottom of the base the density of the tree is much more dense in this section here than the mid to the top section the top sections are softest so it typically gets denser as you go down and if you're going to sink even the 3.6 kilogram uh, maul into the dense timber down the bottom especially if it's uh, been uh, seasoned for a year it's going to bounce off there so you're going to have to repeatedly hit it to uh, try and split it you're much better off splitting the timber when it's uh, wet it splits definitely a lot easier so that's about it so as far as I'm concerned the Fiscus X27 fiber comp uh, splitting axe has got a thumbs up for me and uh, it may not suit everyone but it's the largest in the range except for the ISO core uh, uh, the pro the mall so anytime that you see the word mall it'll have a, a sledgehammer on the back so that's that's it's, it's a combination yeah sledgehammer uh, splitting wedge you use a sledgehammer to drive star posts in or you know any any type of stakes so yeah very great uh, combination it's a great idea so uh, thumbs up thanks for watching bye for now